broken down is the city of chaos, says Isaiah. Every house is shut up so that no one can enter. In the streets, there is an outcry. All joy has reached its eventide. All mirth of the world is gone. Desolation is left in the city, and its gates are battered in ruins. You think they're just talking about physical buildings? <laughs> don't, don't these people who wrote this know that it's, civilizations come and go? They're talking about some other kind of house that's battered to ruins. The house of the brain, the house of consciousness. And coming more to the point, if you haven't felt it before, it's going to start happening soon. In November of this year, and for the whole of 2007, all the way up to 2012, there's a very major cycle that's going to begin. We've been talking about time and cycle and all of that. Well, there's another cycle you need to know about that's approaching us very, very soon. And it's the coming in of the planet Pluto. Now, I wish I could get more into the concept that when I'm talking about the planets, I'm not talking about the effects of rocks in space with magic rays. People who know my work on astrology know that I know about an inner zodiac. The whole idea is that these rocks in space just represent energies. They are not the thing itself. So don't get me wrong there. But Pluto is an archetype that represents a certain kind of energy that is actually psychological in nature. That's all I can say for now. Pluto, the planet of destruction, and I prefer the word deconstruction. Because really, if you think about it, nothing is ever destroyed. It's just transmuted. And radical change will be crossing galactic center and channeling that energy of the central sun in early 2007. It takes approximately 250 years for Pluto to complete one circuit of the zodiac or 12 signs. We saw the 12 signs. We'll now think of one planet moving very, very slowly. Because the sun and Mercury and Venus and some of the other planets we know, they move very, very quickly. And their, their effects then are very, very sort of short-lived. Even though if you're sensitive, you can always feel it. That's what astrology is all about, is the mapping and charting of the, of the effects of these uh, bodies. But Pluto moves very slowly and has very, very dramatic effect. Now, Pluto is presently approximately 24 degrees of Sagittarius. Please excuse me if you're not familiar with this astrological jargon. And when it moves into Capricorn, the sign of order and government, Capricorn, right, the sign of order and government, it will augur in cataclysmic upheavals and expose, exposure of all corruption in order to restore harmony. In fact, a lot of what you're seeing in the exposures recently have been because it's moving in. It's already coming. Its orbit is 250 years, so about three, four years ago, already what you might even say the turn of the millennium, let's say, already the effects of Pluto have been felt. But it's going to get stronger and stronger and stronger, like a dimmer turning up. It augurs in the exposure of all corruption in order to restore harmony and a higher way of being. Individual lives will also be dramatically transformed. Pluto comes to check psychic immunity. We all know about physical immunity. If you don't have it, you get a disease, right? Pluto is the, is the surgeon coming in to say, roll up the sleeve, say ah. It's going to check the psychic immunity. And it brings with it a deep cleansing cycle. One can think of it as nature's psychic surgeon. Pluto also rules death and regeneration of the self, as old aspects of your life pass away. Pluto does not represent death in the literal sense. Instead, it refers to a metaphorical death, something that ceases to be. And those who know about this stuff know that when you're feeling the effects of Pluto, it's going to be in your relationships that you're going to feel it first. Forget about Capitol Hill and White House and all of that. You're going to feel it much closer to home. Now the next statement from Carl Jung is the one that is basically the theme of the entire presentation very important statement and it is the crux of all of the work that I do. I am fully aware of all of the other obscenities that are taking place you know in the name of God in the name of religion in the name of freedom and sovereignty but you see in my book I will not leave consciousness at the door and this is the reason. Carl Jung says that the gigantic catastrophes that threaten us today are not elemental happenings of a physical or biological order but are psychic events. To a quite terrifying degree we are threatened by wars and revolutions which are nothing other than psychic epidemics. At any moment, several millions of human beings may be smitten with a new madness. And then we shall have another world war or devastating revolution. Instead of being at the mercy of wild beasts, earthquakes, landslides and inundations, modern man is battered by the elemental forces of his own psyche. It's just that the other stuff, you know, the symptoms of this, you can, you can take a Polaroid of it. You can catch it on film and you can call physical police to handle it. But there is a far greater form of violence going on 
that we are still to educate ourselves in. And it just so happens that the most toxic and unworked people just happen to be in power. So we've just diagnosed them. They just happen to be the ones most infected by the epidemic and they're walking loose and hoping that you'll catch it too. And if we continue to violate the natural order because of our inner emotional and psychological toxicity, we will allow the ego to manifest surrogate channels to exercise its repressions and other negative debris. As we said, there's a deep connection between Pluto and Uranus, Scorpio and Aquarius, and this act of rebellion, the spirit of rebellion, is coming in with Pluto. So if the astrological jargon is you know, hard to get your mind around, don't worry. Pluto represents an act of true holistic rebellion against all that is punitive and corrupt. That rides against the establishment, and it's an old story. Martin Luther, the founder of Protestantism, says nothing is more poisonous, harmful, or devilish than a man in rebellion. Christianity and these organizations, these organized religions, as well as the corporate dominance of governments, they're there to erase your spirit of rebellion. That's their modus operandi. That's why they exist. They don't exist to take you to God or to heaven. There's very few enlightened people in Christianity, if you haven't noticed. There's very few enlightened people anywhere in the world, including on the banks of the Ganges. But the, what there is is conformity, violence, subservience to tradition, and untold sadism to the self and to others. And there is the obvious control and, and subjugation of the true spirit of rebellion.
sick individual finds himself at home with all other similarly sick individuals. The whole culture is geared to this kind of pathology. The result is that the average individual does not experience the separateness and isolation the fully schizophrenic person feels. He feels at ease amongst those who suffer from the same deformation. In fact, it is the fully sane person who feels isolated in the insane society. And he may suffer so much from the incapacity to communicate that it is he who may become psychotic. The magician, an occultist, Manly Palmer Hall, said to repress rebellion is to maintain the status quo, a condition which binds the mortal creature in a state of intellectual or physical slavery. But it is impossible to chain man merely by slaving his body. The mind also must be held, and to accomplish this, fear is the accepted weapon. The common man must fear life, fear death, fear God, fear the devil, and fear most his overlords, the keepers of his destiny. It's the master slave, and it begins from the moment that you enter school. The teacher is a slave of somebody else. He's going to treat you like a slave, the false teacher.